Hi everyone, I'm two weeks into development, halfway through my challenge. If this is the first video you're watching on this channel, I'm basically going through the process of creating my very first video game in one month. A game you should be able to download and play by the end of this series. You can check out the presentation video of this challenge on my channel, and I highly advise you to check out the first devlog before watching this one. Presentations and warnings aside, let's jump straight into it. Enjoy! So I started day 6 by adapting the sheep progression bar to sheep getting eaten by the wolf. But of course, nothing ever works on the first try. Okay, let me just tweak something, and here we go, that's better. I then ran back to my trusty Code Monkeys tutorial because Roman wanted to try the game but with a controller. And anyways, I had to get it out of the way. This new system is much more versatile and I can now easily adapt the player controls to a keyboard, a controller or a touchscreen. Next on the plan, I had to work on player UI. I really did not expect this to be so long. I started with the screen that would pop up when the player loses a level, which occurs when the timer arrives at zero or when there are no sheep left. I really had no idea of my skill in building a correct user interface, so I started simple and I implemented a simple try again functionality, which worked like a charm. Now to the real deal, the level success UI. First of all, correct the bug that would trigger the level failed UI on top of the level success UI when the level timer reaches zero, and then I could start building the screen. So my goal here was for the elements to pop out one by one to release a lot of dopamine in our gamer brain when we finish a level. Yeah, and that's only with 50 seconds left. With the first day ending and the sun setting down, we decided with Roman to go on an adventure. I don't know if you've heard of the We Were Here series, I guess you do, but it's a series we really enjoy playing together. It's all about communication and compromise and challenging our couple and they had just released a new adventure, there couldn't have been a better way to end the day. This short adventure was divided in three trials. First trial, easy. We're getting used to these kind of challenges. Second trial, a bit on the tougher side. This required a lot of reflection and it took us around 40 minutes and two attempts to complete it. Now to the real deal, the third trial. In this trial, one of the players had a great view on the level and had to guide the other player through it. As you can see, for example, there's an invisible path here and I'm guiding Roman to get her through it. But of course, if you fail, you had to start all over. And this happened a lot. One of my major personality traits, and this applies to every domain in my life, is the need for efficiency. And in this kind of level, when you keep dying over and over, I start to become confident and I start going faster. Maybe a bit too fast. <laughs> <laughs> Another one of my personality traits is I learn from my mistakes. Anyways, we finished the level, almost died on a roller coaster, got spit out of a frozen waterfall, and we got judged by the captain. Apparently, we're crusty crewmates. This weekend deserves to be in this devlog. Our city, Arras, was hosting the first World French Fry Championship. Roman ran in a bag of potatoes. We wanted to go on a hike, and the small village we started from was hosting the Apple Festival. Ew. The hike was really enjoyable. But most importantly, our friend Axel, you can see here, here, and here is very good at imitating sheep, so I propose her to record her voice as sound effects for my game. Day 7 started really nicely, but it would not last. I slightly adjusted the wolf to make him get in contact with the sheep much easier, and this ended out really satisfying. The wolf now makes the sheep flee, and this now feels much more organic. I could watch this all day. Back to the level success screen. This took me the rest of my day, and there was always something wrong. Look at this slowly. The player loses score at the end of the countdown. Where's the dopamine now? 
around 4 p.m. I got it finally working and it looks okay. I still had a little time left, so I started working on a new player ability, which is growling. It's kind of a longer bark and has a slightly different effect. I also worked on the UI relative to the growl and to the bark. I wanted to end the day with a tiny refactor, just to make things clean. So as usual with refactoring, when you press play, you should have exactly the same result as before. Unity crashed. Okay. Try again, reboot Unity, press play, another crash. Okay, reboot PC, launch Unity, press play. I think it's better for my mental sanity if I stop here today. And because I'm really stupid, or because I really love pain, I launched a few Overwatch games. And yeah, I still play Overwatch, despite all the mess Blizzard has done to this game. And exactly like this day, they started okay, but very soon this feeling of skill and power vanished, leaving place to a feeling of sadness, despair and incompetence. One game loss happens to everyone, right? Okay, I'm losing with DPS characters, I'll just play Tang then. Idiot Tang. Oh, I love this Overwatch community. Day 8. I woke up to a brass band jamming, but it was in my head. Covid. But with modern times comes modern weapons, and armed with them, I was able to work all day. I started by upgrading the growl visuals with a particle system and a screen shake and I realized I wasn't completely satisfied with the growl and bark icons on the user interface. They really didn't fit the art style of the game at all. So I reworked them and I also added a new player ability which is running. Now the player can run and of course if he runs too much he gets tired, decreasing his movement speed and making him unable to run until his endurance bar is full again. And as I'm editing, I realize this makes no sense and it should be the other way around. A full endurance bar that depletes when the player runs. I'll change that real soon. I then added these flea markers that indicate when the sheep are in the flea state. And I think that's a really important addition. With a very slight animation when they appear, this looks quite nice. I also added the flea marker to the wolf. And then I wanted to rework the bark and growl visuals in the game. They also didn't fit quite well with the art style. I'm still not fully satisfied with the result, but I gotta move on. I then added a feature that was suggested to me by the mini fantasy community, an injured state for the sheep. Now they leave a trail of blood when they get bitten by the wolf and their movement speed decreases. But I had one problem. When the dog would free them by barking or growling near the wolf, the freed sheep would flee too. So I fixed that by adding a new extreme aggregate state on the sheep that would trigger when he get released by the player. And this behavior forces the sheep to aggregate no matter what happens when they get released. Now lastly, damn I did a lot of things on day 8, I implemented the sound effects Axel recorded last weekend. Shout out to these sheep imitation skills. <laughs> More COVID, here we go again. But this time... No. <coughs> so I sat with my cat all morning long. Being sick is when cats finally get a purpose. And then I did the only thing I could do today. Chopping chives. And don't get me wrong, this is the only plant we managed to grow this summer. Okay, ça va? Tout va bien? <laughs> and one of the main advantages of working in a company, anyways in France, is that when you're sick, you're fully taken care of by the system. And as an independent now, I can go fuck chop chisel. <laughs> the 
the brass band live session going on in my head was slowly coming to an end. I was regaining energy and today was the perfect day to start building my first level. And by building I mean painting. This is one of the methods to build levels in 2D. You basically have a paintbrush, a palette and an empty canvas to fill. I didn't think this would be one so hard and two so long. But it was still a very enjoyable activity to do on this post-covid day. So here I'm building the initial pen, where the sheep will be waiting for you to move them to the next pen. It's actually very hard to build something that looks natural and organic, and not just some plain robotic level. This is my very first experience with level design, and I did not realize the amount of details that are put in video game levels in general. And I'm not really taking into account the procedurally generated levels. But hand-painted levels? I will never play a video game with hand-painted levels the same way again. <clears throat> I'm struggling to fill the silence here. This is really long. And I started using another grass tile set, but just making this one lump of grass took me way too long. So I decided to implement rule tiles. What are rule tiles? Well, basically, they allow you to set a certain number of rules for each tile, allowing it to have more tiles placed on top, on the bottom, to the left or to the right of it. This will considerably speed up things for the next levels. Now, with my set of rule tiles prepared for my six grass variations tile set, I was ready to put some texture in my level. One important thing to add was some boundaries for the level, and these wall of trees fit the job perfectly. Now I'll just stop talking and let you enjoy the time lapse of me building the level. I personally really enjoy watching this, it feels very satisfying. But if you want to skip it, you can totally do that by reaching the time code that appears on the screen. Okay, so I had most of my level built by now, so what if we put sheep in our pen and try pressing play? Oh right, I forgot to add colliders. Colliders added, and this worked better. But we had more problems. 
So first of all, fix the render order of the shadows. For those of you who don't know, the render order represents the order in which the visuals are represented in your scene. For example, here, the shadow is represented in front of the rocks, which doesn't make any sense. So that's what I fixed here. And split our obstacles into the base of the obstacle that blocks the player, here the tree trunk, and the top of the prop that will not block the player. And now, as the dog goes behind obstacles, he gets occulted by them, so that works well. At this point, my level was almost finished, I just had a few adjustments to make. I really wanted to add a small barn near the end pen, because this is a farm after all, and what would a farm be without a barn? So that was one whole day of level designing and painting. Initially, I imagined implementing dozens of levels in my game, but considering the time it took me to build this level, and that I have a little more than two weeks left to finish the game, I think I will be building five or six levels maybe, and I'll be reusing them with different mechanics and minor changes in their level design. That wraps it up for day 10. I didn't really know what to think of my level until I read the feedback from the mini fantasy community. These people are truly amazing. And if you're watching this, thank you so much. What a giant step, right? That's how I feel today. But at the same time, I'm starting to feel overwhelmed by the amount of work left. To cite a few things left on my checklist, main menu, level selection map, save system, more sheep variations, more wolf variations, balancing, tutorial, music, settings, more sound effects, camera management, bug fixing, Android porting. But when I see what I've accomplished so far, I still have a bit of hope. We'll see if I still feel the same next week. Thanks for watching, remember to like this video if you enjoyed it. And if you want to support me further, at this stage it's very simple, you just have to subscribe to the channel. I have a small surprise coming in my next devlog for my community, so feel free to join now if you want to be a part of it. See you next week, take care, press play.